Hello, welcome. Uh, thank you for joining me. So in this video, I'm going to show you just a very basic uh, introduction to uh, using splines in order to create uh, an object that's kind of artistic, kind of flowing a little bit. And one thing about splines if we go to creating some things like maybe artistic objects, like maybe um, wine glasses or drinking cups or vases or candlesticks or something like that, you don't necessarily want to define everything. Sometimes you want to keep this stuff a little bit fluid, and splines offer a really good opportunity to do that. Splines can be fully defined, but it takes a little bit of effort, and you got to know exactly what you want in order to get them fully defined. But there are ways of using splines without fully defining them, and still have something that comes out uh, looking relatively good. So let's do this. We're going to use a you know, just do a basic wine glass, and I'll show you how that goes together. So I'm going to take a vertical line right down the middle, make it about seven uh, seven inches tall. So on the on the base, it's about two inches. Across the top, it's going to be about three and a half inches, approximately. And then uh, we're going to start the, the cup of the wine glass probably about three inches from the bottom, so about 40% of the way up. And yeah, we'll just do the basics and we'll show you, you just give an introduction to a spline. I started drawing a line, but it gave me a pony line instead. So start here, go out about an inch and a quarter, and we'll just end the, end the line right there. Jump into spline. And one thing to keep in mind about splines is that every time you click your mouse, it puts a point in there. Those points are kind of in a way fixed to the screen right now, but they are manipulatable. So when you click in those points, you can actually start your spline around. So we'll go up about three inches and we'll start uh, going out into the bowl. Go over the top, a little bit over the top, kind of make it closely parallel to each other. Come back to that. And uh, yeah, you probably are as critical about this as I am. It's not going to look very good. It's going to look kind of weird, but we're going to go ahead and define these splines a little bit better in the second film. I'm going to show you what you can do in order to get this uh, to look a little bit better and to function better too. So now that we have that done, go to the green check mark. Now let's take a look at our spline itself. And remember these points I was telling you every time you click your mouse you get a point. These points have uh, certain pulls on them and certain uh, editing elements. If all you did was pull the point, you can just move that point around in any uh, portion of that 2D space that you see. But what's also with those points are these pulls. And these pulls give kind of a vector that you can play around with. And that vector improves or increases the influence of that point over its neighboring point. So it starts with a very basic length. If you click in this one, it's just a, a basic length. And as you pull that, it begins to influence and control <laughs> this point over here. So you can use these to try to try to get a decent curvature on your spline. And you can actually uh, dimension these points too. So just to demonstrate that, we're only going to do this briefly. If we go to uh, Fully Defined Sketch, we just go to the default settings. Even though it's uh, put in all these dimensions, uh, kind of like ordinate dimensions for each one of these points, really didn't fully define it because it does have uh, you know some uh, editing capabilities to it. So we're going to do control Z and get out of that a little bit. But you can do it and to fully define this I wouldn't suggest doing it because it's a lot of work unless you really need to do it if you need to be that precise. We're going to keep it fluid for this exercise but uh, some things you might want to do if you want to define it is click on these uh, poles and to give you a length for that pole if you want to make that a specific length you could do an angle to it. If you want to click on uh, perhaps that, and yeah, maybe the center line or that, yeah, that center line arrow to give you an angle to it, 50 degrees. And you notice that that pole now is becoming fully uh, defined. So it's got an angle to it, it's got a, sp a specific point to it, and it's got a length to it. But this point here, it can still be moved around. So in reference to the to um, to the spline itself. This is fully defined, but the spline can still be moved. At this point, we can put an ordinate dimension on that point in reference to perhaps that line. Maybe make that one inch. And this line, which would uh, represent the x-axis. And that would even further define it. So if we were to do that to all the neighboring points, then our line would begin to turn black and we would get portions of our spline that would become fully defined. But for this exercise, we're just going to keep it fluid. And uh, let's go ahead and revolve this and see what this looks like. Go to Features, Evolve Boss Space, and yes, we want to enclose it. And we do have to identify our axis of revolution. If we do this one, it's going to give us something weird. It's going to revolve it that way, but what we really want is this one. 
net re uh, results a little bit better. Green check mark, and there's our um, Flintstones era wine glass. You might say, kind of looks uh, uh, primitive in nature and not very stable mechanically. So in the next film, we'll show you a little bit more in the way of options in regard to managing your splines.